All right, it's time to go back to Hong Kong. Some criminal named Kai is having an affair with his boss's wife. He goes on a run to South Africa for 10 years, where of course, he sexually assaults a tribal woman infected with Ebola. Starring Anthony Wong from The Untold Story. Both that movie and this one share the same director, Herman Yao. Before we get into the video, we do have a word from NordVPN. It's a very cool thing being able to search the web, stream your favorites, and watch your favorite videos. But just simply being connected, your privacy is at stake. That is why NordVPN is just what you need to keep your information private and save you money. Being connected to public Wi-Fi, it's not safe. Anybody could snoop on you and trick you without you knowing. And it's not much better being connected to your home Wi-Fi. Your ISP can see everything you search and even throttle your internet even though you pay so much money a month. Just one click can connect you to one of thousands of fast servers in over 60 countries. Private or public, Nord uses military grade encryption on your connection and creates a new IP address so that nobody, including your ISP, will know what you're searching and let's just say you want to watch a movie on Netflix but it's only on the South Korean version of Netflix well all you got to do is connect to the South Korean server and you can watch that movie no problem no geo restrictions whether it's your gaming computer cell phone tablet Nord can be installed on six different devices. It's Black Friday. You know NordVPN is gonna hook you up just right. You can power up your internet today with the help of NordVPN and definitely take advantage of this limited time Black Friday deal. If you go to nordvpn.com slash spooky rice or use the code spooky rice, you get 68% off of a two year plan plus four additional months free. And you have a risk-free 30-day money-back guarantee on it. Let me say that again. If you go to nordvpn.com slash S-P-O-O-K-Y-R-I-C-E, you get 68% off of a two-year plan, plus four additional months free. Let's thank NordVPN for sponsoring today's video. So let's just see how putrid this can get. If you want to see what happens, including all the messed up parts, stay tuned for the breakdown. Cue to Gohan. Now I don't know why she chose Kai of all people, but she did. She's the boss's wife and Kai is just Kiryu fodder. That means he could easily be beaten up probably. Her husband comes in and she immediately backtracks saying she doesn't even care if they kill Kai. They even make him, sorry, they make her pee on him to humiliate him further. Look at, just look at her peeing on him. They made the mistake of telling him to castrate himself. And Kai, he kicks the beer in the gang leader's face, stabbing one of the goons in the dick and shanking the boss. He then crushes a table over the gang leader's neck right in front of his daughter. She's watching her dad and his gang get messed up. I see this damn face every time I search this movie. I assumed it would be later than this scene though. The wife, who doesn't know what side she's on, is never going to know what things taste like again. He cuts her tongue out for betraying him and not licking his wee wee good enough. Then he realizes they have a daughter. He smells her like a shark or something, a baby shark. Another little girl death, huh? I wasn't expecting that so soon. He drags her out puts $10 on pump three and tells her it won't hurt much. At the nick of time, some geek comes in and scares Kai off. Now Lily here is left with trauma and Kai is on the run. Turns out the perverse sicko lands in South Africa and has been there for 10 years. He's a cook of a Chinese restaurant and he has no game and the ladies all hate him. This lady in particular is the restaurant owner's wife and Kai is jealous that his wee wee isn't as big as the restaurant owners. This pretty flight attendant is Lily, the girl from years before. She's pretty awkward at speaking English though. Apart from that, Kai, his boss, and the boss's girlfriend all seem to be pretty darn racist. Mostly everyone is. So expect scenes where Kai or anyone are just spamming N words and C words in the subtitles. Guess who visits the restaurant? Some visitors from Hong Kong eat at the restaurant, but Lily here, she's there and she grows sick from even being around Kai. She vomits in the toilet and we realize for sure that she is the little girl from years before. 
Later, there is another scene in which Kai is left with blue balls because a white prostitute doesn't want anything to do with him because he's Chinese. He decides to jerk off in the bathroom listening to his boss have sex with his wife. He uses a slice of meat to, I'm sure you get the picture. Of course, he puts the meat right back where he found it. So while he's busy trying to get rid of Nut, Lily is trying to get rid of the nightmares that Kai has brought her after killing her parents. It seems like she kind of regressed the memory until Kai brought it back. The next day, Kai and the boss are on their way to buy uh, meat from a Zulu tribe, but a damn cheetah smells meat of its own. Is that really real? Like, did he really have a cheetah right next to them? Herman went more hardcore than the director of Cannibal Ferox. They escape and meet up with the tribe, and you get that same surrounded feeling you get watching Cannibal Holocaust. But the people in this settlement are sick. People literally have wolves all over their body, and chicken blood isn't going to do much when you're dying from something like that. Here's the pigs that the two want to buy, but I don't know. These conditions don't look very good. Well, they buy one and get out of there. On the way back, wait, first look at all these damn animals. Some elephants block the road and they sound pretty funny, it's like they're speaking Chinese. Kai gets into an argument with his boss about crashing the car and decides to leave him and that whack ass job behind. In the distance after walking a bit, he sees a tribal woman who is obviously sick and she falls out. Don't know why Kai cares, but he runs towards her asking if she's okay. Helping her out, he starts to get aroused from touching her and then decides to rape the woman. In the midst of it though, she starts convulsing and throws up on his face. She's already dying, but he murders her with a rock when she's squeezing a little too hard down there. He runs back to his boss in that whack ass job and basically submits to the pressure after realizing he's been infected by that woman. When he's back at work, he's very sickly and falls out in the middle of the restaurant. Turns out that this decrepit fool has a fever from raping the sick woman. The boss goes to visit a doctor about the infection that is making Kai sick and it gets very relevant to today seeing him have to put on a mask and all of that. I was in 10th grade when everybody was tripping about the Ebola virus in the United States, but damn, I could have never imagined this coronavirus thing. Anyway, for sure, Kai has Ebola, and just his mere presence in the restaurant is threatful to everyone else. In fact, Kai so happens to be one in millions of people to get a fever, but not die from the disease. So he's basically a carrier in the same sense that some people also spread the COVID stuff without suffering from it. He wakes up from his fever no more affected, but still he's a carrier and here's a plot from the boss's wife about killing him and dumping him in the woods. Angry, he chases her through the restaurant and almost rapes her, but the boss comes in and fights back. After a little bit, he was kind of pussy about it. Now it's a cautious fight through the restaurant because he doesn't want to be infected and because of that Kai gets the upper hand and blinds four eyes so bad that he destroys his own restaurant. Kai destroys his head with a door kind of like what Kingpin did in that Daredevil season one episode. It's like you look at that episode of Daredevil that's in the MCU and then you just go out to the theaters to watch Spider-Man Homecoming and you're like, are these in the same worlds? Like, wow, well, that's so mature. I'm sorry, that was a weird rant, but that, that's always been on my mind. With him dead, Kai bullies the widow in a scene that will probably get this video age restricted. NordVPN's not gonna like that. But then this dude sucks her eye out. I think he, he sucks her eye out. Where do you see that? I think he did something like that. He quickly kills her with a table to the neck. He loves breaking necks with tables. He sets both bodies up in the kitchen with these untold story vibes. But then another employee comes to get his check. The poor bastard slips on blood and is beaten to death. Then he starts cutting limbs right off, literally deboning people. This movie is just like the untold story at this point. Look at all the human burgers he made. 
What's worse is that Kai has infected both of them before dying. So all of these hamburgers that he made with their meat are carrying Ebola. All these customers are eating the hamburgers like it's the hottest thing in the world. I'm sure they're not that good. Come on now. Even if they didn't have Ebola, this is still fucked up. Restaurant is closed the next night and Kai is swimming in money hidden by the boss. Later, Lily and her boyfriend talk about Kai and how she recognized him from 10 years ago. They go back to the restaurant to see if she really does recognize him. And again, she almost vomits just from standing next to him. Okay, so she doesn't recognize Kai, she recognizes his smell. So when Kai tells her that Kai left to another country when she's asking about him, she knows that he is lying. They harry their ass out of there and tell inspectors that she has a feeling that Kai is a murderer. A feeling. We know how feelings go at the police station. Then suddenly, we get a sickness montage. People all over Johannesburg are just literally <laughs> dropping out and having seizures. Look at this mayhem, it's disturbing on his own in the time we are in. Later, Kai is seen disguised. Looks like he's leaving this dirty, murderous place behind. Meanwhile, doctors are literally dissecting people who died from this Ebola strain. Warn your eyes here because they are cutting directly into him. They find out that his organs literally turn into mush and are liquefied. And here they are cutting his face right open. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty gnarly, huh? Kai, meanwhile, goes back to Hong Kong. Well, that was quick. He gets into a penthouse using his newfound fortune and parties with some escorts. But recall, Kai is the carrier of that disgusting Ebola virus. So these two women are not even going to be able to spend none of that money. One of them convulses right in front of her friends during game night and the other one infects a hairstylist. Just look at this man. It's scary how the smallest of cells can cause reactions like this. These doctors are very ill looking at these pictures. I don't even want to show one of them. It's probably fake, but it makes Rare look like Dora almost. Some detectives know that the victims in Hong Kong were escorts and that somebody paid for those escorts time. No matter what, Kaya lose them and in South Africa, the authorities there trace the Ebola virus to the restaurant and let's just say they know Kai is the main suspect. The South African and Hong Kong police departments work together to find Kai, the murderer and carrier of a very nasty disease. Meanwhile, Kai goes back to his old apartment building place. Turns out he's just there to reignite with an old flame with nothing but his money. And it works because she really needs money. Now, the guy is like a father to her daughter as well, but he's still a carrier of a deadly disease that is getting almost everybody sick. Kai would basically be a terrible nightmare in 2020, and the film plays around with him almost getting this little girl sick. He does sneeze all over a gang of, I don't know, but they surprisingly don't beat his ass, but that's a story for another day. Even if he didn't have Ebola, he's very disgusting. I hate this strain of coronavirus, but good lord, I'm so glad we don't have to deal with this despair. Imagine seeing people literally fall out and not be in control of their movements. Lily is back in Hong Kong now and has a smell radar of locating Kai, daredevil type shit. He's a wanted criminal that for some reason Lily chases herself. She bites his arm and luckily runs away and she tells the detectives that Kai is right there, right there. But they are probably the most incompetent detectives of all time, like come on. And also we can see here that she bit him, that's not her blood, so she's carrying the Ebola virus now. And that is quite literally the last time we see Lily. Sooner or later, Kai is all over the news, and why? They know every single bad thing Kai has did, and Kai's girlfriend here pretends to be on his side, which is pretty smart in that situation to stay safe. But when he's not looking, they lock his ass inside the room. A lot of people today, including these fucking students, really need to be locked in a room. 
Well, he escapes outside of the kitchen window as police with protected suits come to save the day. But Kai, he's already Nathan Draking outside and grabs the little girl. With the hostage, he has him at bay, and his nasty disease spit is all over the place. The whole block is hot, and the little girl has to watch her mom succumb to that virus. She did kind of have sex with Kai. Finally, they shot his ass. Honestly, I'm really starting to get tired of him. Like, just shoot him. Kill him. Of course, I know they don't want to hit the little girl, but fuck, man. He's just a living virus now. Whoa. Did he just break her? Look at her. Look at her. Did he break her neck? The little girl is dead just like that. Can y'all please just blow his head off? Yes. Thank you. <laughs> oh, that was a dart. He just drains the poison out with his machete and infects another idiot just like that. That cop he infected is ready to end it though and burns his ass with some contraption. Now Kai is burning all over. I guess you don't really think to stop and roll when you're in intense pain. To add to it, he is ran over with a car and then is let loose with a whole clip. That's what I'm talking about. Kai is finally fucking dead. But still, the damage he has laid still exists, and now they gotta clean up. My college acted like they was gonna do this shit once we moved in, but that was a bunch of bullshit. The movie ends with the little girl giving her dog a taste of some food, only to bite it next. That same dog just ate some of Kai's meat that he cut off, carrying on the infection to this little ass girl. The end. Well actually it ends with a clip of Kai at the beginning saying some nonsense. But there we have it, Ebola syndrome. I won't lie, I, I got kind of bored in the second half. I was just waiting on the showdown at that point. Now let's talk about the most disturbed moment and most enjoyed moment, and that spooky stuff. Cue to Gohan. I find it hilarious how all the Category 3 films I've seen feel the same. It's like there's a Category 3 cinematic universe or something. Extreme scenes, humor, and probably little kids dying. Don't expect this is the last time you've seen Anthony Wong. The most disturbed moment is, honestly for me, the pictures of the people with Ebola. This picture right there it doesn't sit well with me at all for some reason. Other than that, I was just chilling with this movie. So, I mean, <laughs> not a lot of amount of murder or whatever really went above my power level. Most enjoyed moment is actually seeing Kai get ran over and murdered. I was honestly kind of tired of Kai at this point. He was very crude, racist, disgusting, and annoying. Not to mention he is a serial killer with a deadly disease to spread that wants to take everybody down with him. And that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you click the like button and subscribe if you want to stay tuned for more disturbing movies. Two other Hong Kong films I've also made videos on is Red to Kill, my favorite, and The Untold Story. Both have a similar feel to this movie, and overall, I'm sure you will enjoy those videos. Thanks for watching. Spooky out.